Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome back to my channel, Canterbury Cottage. Recently, just out of curiosity, I began researching the top selling home decor of 2021. And while it's impossible to say exactly what the most popular items have been this past year, there were definitely certain categories that kept showing up again and again. And so today I want to show you some inexpensive ways to DIY 16 of these top selling items. That's a lot. So we better get started. Plant decor is so popular right now, including gold metallic flowers and plants. I took the backing off of three Goodwill frames and tried to remove the glass, but it broke. Luckily, I didn't need the glass anyway. I painted the frames with satin black spray paint and the artwork and mats with heirloom white spray paint. I purchased three pieces of metal wall art at Goodwill and removed the plants from their metal frames. I checked to see how the plants would look in my wood frames and found it necessary to snap off some of the leaves and reattach them with super glue to create a better fit. I gave the metal leaves a couple coats of vintage gold spray paint. I reattached the back using an electric stapler. I made sure the metal stem was stuck firmly in the corner of the frame, and then I attached it to the backing with hot glue. To finish it off, I attached some brown craft paper to the back with a glue stick and attached a sawtooth hanger. My wall art is a little smaller than those featured in the inspiration, However, mine cost less than $5 each. This was a fairly easy project, and I'm pretty pleased with how they turned out. I thought this metal rose was really overpriced. However, I couldn't find a good metal flower, so I decided to use a metal butterfly instead. I hot glued some styrofoam rocks and some reindeer moss into a glass candy dish. I didn't like the shiny gold of the butterfly, so I spray painted it with the vintage gold spray paint, and then I hot glued it to one of the moss-covered rocks. You could make this without using any moss if you prefer. You just need to keep an eye out for a good glass dish and an interesting metal flower or insect. I thought these metal leaf sconces from Anthropology were especially pretty. I found an old metal sconce in my stash and used my angle grinder to remove the decorative pieces. I attached a leaf trivet tray to the sconce with E6000 glue, and then I added super glue just to make sure that the two pieces stayed together. I let it dry overnight, and then I gave it a couple coats of the same vintage gold spray paint. This was such an easy way to update an old sconce that I might have otherwise just gotten rid of. I'm actually surprised at how much I really like this. Combining wood and metal in unusual ways to create wall shelving is so on trend right now. I had a metal frame left from an earlier project, so I removed the remaining leaves and smoothed the edge of the frame with my angle grinder. I cut a piece of scrap wood to fit very snugly inside the metal frame. I also sanded it down to the raw wood. I drilled a hole on each side of the metal frame and then attached the shelf using wood screws. Because I didn't have black screws, I touched them up with a dab of paint. I added a sawtooth hanger at each end of the wood shelf. 
To keep the shelf balanced against the wall, I cut two small strips of wood and attached one to each of the bottom corners of the metal frame using super glue. I painted these black to match the rest of the metal frame. This project actually didn't cost me anything because it was made with leftovers from other projects. In fact, the piece of wood is from the entertainment center that I turned into a china cabinet. Some stores are also selling wall shelves that incorporate metal plant art. I had a couple of those intersecting wall boxes in my garage and decided I would use one for this project. I also had some old metal flowers that someone had given me. I decided to bend the flowers so that they would fit in the two slots left where the boxes had previously connected. Once I had it figured out, I took the flowers out and gave them two coats of the vintage gold spray paint, and I painted the box with a couple coats of black spray paint. When the paint was dry, I returned the flowers to the inside of the box. I also took some black paint and touched up the bottom stems that were sticking out of the bottom of the box. The inspiration shelves had black metal flowers, but I'm loving how the gold flowers look against the black shelf. With the popularity of faux and real house plants, people are looking for unusual ways to display them. Since these ceramic busts were not selling in my retail booth, I decided to turn them into planters. I drilled several holes in each bust using drill bits made specifically for ceramic or glass. I cut separate stems off of some fake plants and put them in the holes, adding a little bit of hot glue to make sure that it held in place. For added interest, I added a succulent to the boy's head and a pink flower to the girl's head. If you wanted to put real plants in these busts, you could drill your holes close together to create one hole large enough to hold a small pot. I thought these anthropology vases were cute and decided to make something similar only using square-shaped jars. I put them in an arrangement that I liked and then I attached them together using super glue. After the jars were attached, I applied additional super glue for extra stability. I mixed equal parts of white paint and plaster of Paris to create my own extra thick chalk paint. I applied two coats of this to the jars. When the paint was dry, I lightly sanded to smooth out the finish. I applied caulk in all the creases between the jars. I used my finger to smooth out the caulk or a Q-tip in the crevices where my finger couldn't reach. Then I gave it a final coat of white paint. I think it looks pretty cute with these fluffy ball floral stems from Dollar Tree. I'm going to keep my eye out for other vases that would look interesting glued together like this. Textural wall art is everywhere, and I'm especially loving the woven textiles. I picked up this pillow at Goodwill and cut off the woven front fabric. I took apart a frame that I already had, setting aside the mat. I painted the frame with two coats of a dark brown chalk paint to better match the piece of fabric. I cut down the fabric to fit inside the mat, and I pulled out a few strands of thread to create fringe along two of the edges. I used a right angle to mark and cut perfectly straight lines along the other two edges. I used spray adhesive to attach the fabric directly over the original artwork. 
I used some hot glue along the two side edges just to make sure that it stayed put. Brown paint can look really flat, so to add dimension, I distressed the frame a bit and added a coat of antiquing wax. Then I returned the glass and the mat to the frame and then added the woven fabric piece. After folding down the staples, I added some paper tape just to make sure that everything stayed in place. I think this piece looks so interesting, and no one would ever guess this was a piece of fabric cut from an old Goodwill pillow. Paper art is definitely having a moment this year. The pattern of this lacy women's top reminded me of the paper art, so I decided I would turn it into a piece of art. Using a seam ripper, I removed the darts from the front of the blouse, and then I cut out the large front piece of lace. I took apart a Goodwill frame and set aside the mat. I flipped the artwork over and covered the back with spray adhesive. Then I attached the lace to the backing, smoothing out any wrinkles. I cut off the excess lace and then returned the mat. I painted the frame with the same dark brown chalk paint, distressed it, and applied a coat of antiquing wax. I then returned the glass and mat to the frame, and then I added the lace artwork. I also added some scrap cardboard that I had, securing it to the frame with some paper tape and then I added a sawtooth hanger. I think this is an easy and inexpensive way to get a look similar to that of the very high-priced paper art. I noticed how popular wood vases and pots are when I visited the silos in Waco. When I saw this wood ice bucket at Goodwill, I knew it would make a great planter. I wanted a smooth finish, so I sanded off all the little ridges. One of the decorative tiles came off, so I glued it back in place. The decorative pieces were very dark, so I stained the main portion of the bucket using some antiquing wax. I knocked the knob off of the lid, and then to create a little stand for the planter, I used wood glue to attach the lid to the bottom of the bucket. This wooden ice bucket was such a lucky find. And the little mother of pearl tiles make it look so high end. I think it makes a great planter. Recently, I was at a friend's house who had spent a lot of money on several rustic vases from Pottery Barn. So I began looking for large vases at the thrift stores so I could make myself some. I found two that I liked. I painted both with a mixture of white paint and plaster of Paris. I mixed together three different shades of brown acrylic paint, and then I dry brushed it on the larger of the two vases. There were some places where I felt I got too much brown paint on the vase, but I knew I could come back later and fix it with a little white paint. When the brown paint was dry, I went over the entire vase with some very fine grit sandpaper such as 220 grit. After sanding, I used a little white paint to touch up those areas that I still felt were too brown. I wanted to give the second face a different look, so I mixed some plaster of Paris with gray paint and created splotches all around the vase. Then I mixed the gray paint with a little of the brown paint and dry brushed that all around the vase. When the paint was dry, I went over the vase with a sanding block. I lightly dabbed on white paint to soften all of the paint colors, especially the gray splotches. 
To create additional dimension, I mixed a little bit of the plaster of Paris with some white paint and some brown paint and applied it using a popsicle stick. Once you've covered your vases with your base coat of paint mixed with plaster of Paris, it's a bit of a science experiment. Dabbing, splotching, dry brushing on paint of various colors until you get an effect that you like. Blue and white is classic in home decor, but it has been especially popular this past year. Chinoiserie can be pretty pricey at the thrift stores, but lamps are always cheap. When I saw this blue and white lamp, I knew I could easily turn it into a new item to add to my blue and white collection. It was very easy to take apart. All I needed to do was remove a small rust stain left at the top. I super glued a metal knob that I had to the top to cover the small hole. This is such a unique blue and white pitcher, and had it not been part of a lamp, the thrift store would have easily charged two or three times as much. Blue and white pillows are also super popular right now. Here's a way to make a blue and white pillow for only $2. Sew or hot glue two Dollar Tree dish towels together. Make sure that you leave a hole big enough that you can stuff it. I repurposed the stuffing from the woven pillow I used in a previous project. When the pillow is full of stuffing, sew or hot glue the opening closed. No one will ever guess that this cute little pillow only cost you $2. Blue and white botanical art is also a top seller right now. Like always, I'm going to print out my own art and repurpose some Goodwill frames. I painted the frames with white chalk paint and I found some free printables on the blog Renovated Faith, which I'll link below in my description box. The mats for these beautiful vintage frames were quite unusual. They were velvet and the sides folded so that they covered the inside of the frame. It took a little bit of engineering for me to figure out how I was going to get my print to fit the mat and the frame. I used a piece of cardboard to cover the hole in the mat, and then I covered the entire piece with my print, folding up the four edges so that it would fit back in the frame. I distressed the frame with 220 grit sandpaper and applied a coat of clear wax. I put the print in the frame, added a piece of cardboard, pressed down the staples, and then added some paper tape. I really love the way these look hanging next to my mug rack. You can really find some gorgeous frames for just a few dollars at the thrift store if you just take the time to look. Because indoor plants are so popular right now, the hardware to hang and display them is a top seller. I painted these bright blue buckets with a couple coats of white spray paint. I removed the clips from three curtain rings and found a rod, a curtain rod or a dowel rod would work. I tied nylon black rope from Dollar Tree to each of the three rings and then tied it to the rod, varying the length of each strand. After tying each knot, I glued the loose strand of rope to the main strand of rope to give it a cleaner look. I hung the rod from a couple of old curtain brackets that I had. Although the hanging plants in the inspiration photos were nicer, I think mine is pretty cute for $3. Wood bead decor continues to be a top seller, especially in wall decor. 
I got a great deal on this beaded car seat cover. I won't need to buy any more beads for a long time. Using twine and a darning needle, I threaded the beads into the shape of a half circle, which I tied to the middle of a stick. Then I strung three more half circles of beads, making each one larger than the previous one. I made a tassel to attach to each end of the stick. I've explained how to make tassels in a previous video, which I'll link in the description box below if you're interested. Then I used florist wire to attach a branch of fake greenery to the stick. I added a long piece of twine for hanging purposes, and then I wrapped each end of the stick with twine to make sure that nothing slid off. When stringing your beads, alternate the different types of beads to create a pattern that you like. You could also use a dowel rod instead of a stick if you want a cleaner look. I'm wondering how many of you have already purchased or have been thinking about buying some of these top selling home decor items that I featured today. Well, now you know how to save yourself some money and DIY them for yourself. Well, thanks so much for watching today. Until next Tuesday, bye bye for now.